Hello, planet Earth. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We're at IDK, my BFF Jill730. I'm Preston L. Young, wishing you warm salutations and congratulations. As always, you've made your way to the Buffington Post. You are invited! Today I'll be continuing my Season 9 coverage of the Buffyverse with Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 9, Issue number 24. It's The Core, Part 4. And I'm actually really excited to get into this one with you guys, but first, previously, on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. All season long we've been dealing with the fallout from the destruction of magic. All the Slayers that are still out there basically don't want to play with Buffy anymore, they're not even calling themselves Slayers anymore because there's no magic here. Willow went to go and try and find magic from this whole mystical walk out journey into Kortoff and then like, Wonderland, and she came back with magic, but the magic that she came back with is just like all of it or heart or whatever, and so we don't know what to do with it. We got this cat called Severin, who's the Siphon, who basically has been sucking up the mystical energies left in the world by the beings that maintain that magic energy, okay? So yeah, he sucked all of Illyria's mystical energies out of her, and then, in an attempt to kind of wield Illyria's time-bendy powers, he went down into the deeper well with Simone Doffler in order to try and tap into those pure, ancient, old one energies in order to, like, reverse time so that his girlfriend was never made into a zombie. Which is another problem, we've got these zombies, which are like vampires, but they're not really vampires because they aren't mystically animated by the same stuff that our old vampires were animated by, they're just kind of like autopilot zombie vampires, hence the whole zombie type. So when Dawn started to fade away because there's no magic in the world to keep her, you know, together, Xander decided to team up with Severin and Simone, which was a bad idea because Severin is like losing control down in the deeper well, and Simone used her chance in the deeper well to skip all of the hullabaloo to just get right back to the source of the very first vampires, and now this chick has become a vampire, but like super duper vampire. So yeah, Simone, super slave hire, just attacked Buffy, and everybody else is like trying to fight off Malokur, which is, you know, the source of all vampires, this giant old one baddie looking guy. And Willow is still searching for the kind of source of magic that she needs to find in order to make Dawn happen again. That's pretty much what you need to know, and so without further ado, let's jump into Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 9, Issue number 24, It's the Core, Part 4. Here we go. People say God looks out for the working man. Sure hope he's looking out for me These empty pockets need a helping hand Kitchen tables full of family So our issue opens up and Buffy is asking Simone, like, why would you become a vampire? You're a slayer. This isn't like what we're supposed to do. But then Simone takes this opportunity to say, you know what, Buffy, I'm done playing by your rules. She points out the fact that the only reason she was a slayer was because Buffy made her so. Like, she didn't choose to be a slayer. She was chosen. And now, by becoming vampire, she's made a legitimate choice for herself. So, meanwhile, Willow, you know, she's off on her own mission to try and find, like, the source of magic that she can tap into in order to kind of bring Dawn, like, back to reality because everybody's starting to forget about her, too, and she's, like, thinks that she might have found where she's supposed to be. But then the magic that was all, like, up in her heart that the magic body that she was in gave to her, well, yeah, it just starts exploding out all over the place and we don't know what the heck. Somebody else who doesn't know what the heck is Severin, because he's tapped into all of the sarcophagi down in, like, the middle of the deeper well, and all of the power is making him crazy, and it's really overwhelming him. So the surviving members of the Magical Council, along with Illyria and co., are trying to fight off Malokur, but really they're not making any kind of headway. And so what happens is Illyria insists that, like, the real problem is not Malokur, but Severin, because he's taking in way too much power, and she descends down into the well to try and kind of help Severin to rein all of this uncontrollable power in, and she realizes that magic isn't what's animating the body that she's in. Like, all of her power is gone, and she feels like she has a bigger purpose in still being alive. So Buffy's still trying to fight off Simone, and Simone's talking about how she would have become a vampire a lot sooner, but with the whole zompire situation, it took her a while to actually figure out how to bypass the whole becoming a zompire thing and actually get down to Malokur. 
Buffy says, well, in doing so, it's kind of a waste of time because you brought Severin down here and he's going to destroy the whole universe, but Simone's basically saying he's not going to destroy anything but himself, he's going to get himself killed, and when I go back to the world without magic, I'll be the most powerful thing around. So of course Xander tries to pitch in and help Buffy, but Simone grabs him and she's like, oh poor you, I bet you can't even remember who you came down here to save. And she like throws him down, but as he's falling he says, I do remember, it's Dawn, her name is Dawn. So Buffy tries to like jump after Xander because Simone has just dropped him off like into the well, but Simone catches her and Buffy's like, you know what, enough of this. You're a vampire and I'm gonna fucking kill you. So down with Willow and her whole exploding chest situation, she sees that all of that magic that kind of burst out of her, it is formed into a new seed of wonder. So she's kind of having like a conversation with the magic within her, okay, let's give it to her. And basically she finds out that this new seed won't actually take root for like several thousand years. Like it's just a baby seedling. Like it's, it's here, but it's only like the potential for a new magic seed. It's not solidified yet, which is a problem. Meanwhile, back in San Francisco, we've got Andrew and Spike, and basically Dawn has completely faded away at this point, but they can still remember her, and so they're pretty sure that she's like still kind of there, but there's no real evidence that she's there except for the fact that they can remember her. So we're basically just holding a lot of this on faith, you know what I mean? So back with Maloker, the big scary old one down in the deeper well, yeah, he gets his mitts on Ko, and Ko puts up a brave face, he's saying, yeah, I'll slice you up from the inside, etc, etc. But luckily, uh, Simone happened to drop Xander right down on Ko, so yay. So back with Simone and Buffy, basically, Simone has been having to kind of live in Buffy's shadow this whole time, and she's not worried about everything else that's going on. She's finally going to get to do what she wants to do, which is kill Buffy. So back down with Severin, he is like losing his mind, like going crazy, all of this power is coming out, and Illyria comes to him, and he's like, oh, Claire? And she's like, no, I am not Claire. There is no Claire. You cannot bring Claire back. You trying to play with time will actually tear apart the fabric of reality. So listen to me, we need to get you cool and you need to figure out a way to contain all of this power. So Willow shows up with her fancy new not quite a seed and she's like, I've got an idea. Meanwhile, Buffy is not having the best time with Simone. Simone's like, come on girl, why won't you just give up already? And she says, uh, because you're a vampire and I'm the Slayer. So back with Severin, Willow, and Illyria, like, basically, Severin has way too much power, and Willow wants him to try and channel it into the seed. Like, he's been collecting all of this mystical mojo for all this time, and what he can do to try and, like, make this world a better place is actually to push all of that power into the seed to make it kind of solidify and jumpstart it. And basically... He doesn't want to do this. He wants to use all of this power for what he's been trying to do all season. And Illyria lays it out to him. She says, I had a friend who was just like you. He was trying, like, to go on these wild goose hunts to try and, like, save his loved one. And, of course, she's talking about Wesley. And Wesley, sure, he was not able to live without Fred, but he died trying to make the world a better place, and that is the opportunity that Severin now has. So Illyria decides to stay down in the deeper well and help Severin to figure out how to push all of these mystical energies into the seed, and Willow's like, hey, you know, like, I'll do this, like, magic is my job, the seed is my responsibility. But Illyria says, no, let me do this, it's my power, I understand all of this power, and I understand what it's for, and your power will return to you once we've done this, and your responsibility should really be bringing the Slayer's sister back. And basically, Willow says, this isn't what I expected from somebody called Illyria the Merciless, and Illyria says, you know, this is not what I expected either. Meanwhile, stuff is still fucking crazy with Malachar and everybody trying to fight this giant guy off, okay? So, Severin is going to put the magic into the seed, and it's going to be like, as Willow says, a magical Chernobyl around here. And so, they everybody, like, needs to go, and Simone comes along and says, oh, no, 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 nobody's going anywhere. And we see that she has stabbed Buffy through 
with the scythe, and yeah. And Simone is super playing for keeps. And that's where we end the issue. So one thing that I'll say about this issue is I don't like the cover. I hate this cover. First of all, I don't like Phil Noto's art style. It's just, see all these pastels? Like, it's so pastel -y, and he does this with, like, basically all of his covers. I don't like his style of art. I don't like the look that he brings to Buffy. I don't like the look that he brought to Angel and Faith in the issue that uh, he was illustrating over there. I just don't appreciate it, and especially, like, I have a big problem with um, covers that don't seem to have anything to do with the actual content of the book. Like, I get it. Like, Dawn is fading away here, and we've got Spike, and we've got Buffy, but Spike is barely in the issue at all. Like, he's barely in the issue, and this just doesn't have a whole lot to do with what's really going on here. Now, I will say that in the issue, we have Spike and Andrew talking about the fact that uh, they know that she's still, like, basically there. And the reason for that is because this comes right after the magic explodes from Willow's chest. And after this happens, it's like, it's like because we have this almost a seed, uh, the potential for Dawn to still exist is totally there, which is why I believe um, Xander can remember Dawn's name, and it is why uh, Spike and Andrew believe that Dawn must still be there. Like, uh, just the very potential for Dawn's existence uh, to be there is what allows for those uh, memories and that kind of recognition of Dawn to be there as well. So I think that's very smart, and honestly, I love the idea of um, the seed coming out of Willow. Uh, when you think about it, Willow and Severin have kind of been um, on separate paths to the same destination. Severin has uh, been foretold, like we find out for Ko, that the, the siphon is this centuries-old like myth. Like It's been a myth since the dawn of time, and so when you think about the idea that the universe was trying to evolve itself, and that's why Twilight happened, it makes sense that there would be this backup plan as well. Like, if magic were to be taken away, we would have the siphon to kind of suck up all of the magic that's out there and concentrate it back into this new seed. And so Willow, she went and she got this magic, and it looked like it was just like, oh, well, wherever I am, I can bring magic back into the world and bring this inspiration and life back in. But really, it's it's like their, their experiences have been leading them to this very moment. Like, Willow brought that magic back so that she could put it out there into the world and so that Severin could use all of the concentrated magic that he's been collecting all season in order to bring magic back into our world. And I think this whole idea is very smart and you aren't really expecting for it to come together in that way, but when it does, it really makes a shit ton of sense. Illyria here. Illyria has been wondering you know, why is it that I still exist? It's because Illyria is used to power. Um, Illyria is used to wielding power, her own power, and also uh, the power of Fred and Wesley. You have to understand that, like, Spike and Fred and Wesley's minds, they were all kind of, like, molded into Illyria, and power is, is that. It's the understanding of power. It is power in every uh, idea, and so... Like, the fact of the matter is, Illyria has been animated in this magicless body because it has a job to do. It has kind of, in this issue, come to terms with the fact that she's still alive because she has to guide that power on to its full potential and its ultimate purpose, if you will. And so this, this self-sacrificial moment for Illyria is actually really earned. Um, like like Willow says, and like Illyria says, this isn't what either of them was really expecting, but it does have a great emotional weight to it, and it doesn't feel so far out of left field um, well, for me upon a second read as it did the first time. And this issue really is all about the different characters kind of um, recognizing their own um, personal responsibility and purpose for this whole scheme, you know what I mean? Like, we've got Severin, and he's realizing, sure, he was trying to amass all of this power for the wrong reasons, but he can actually use that for the ultimate greater good, which is to put, you know, a, a girl's life back. Like, he wants to bring Claire back, but Claire's gone. 
If he tries to go fucking with time, it's gonna, like, tear reality apart, and he can't save her. But he can still save Dawn, and he can save millions of people, because we, we've seen what Willow can do with magic, and we know what magic is capable of, and so for Severin, he's really coming to the understanding that you don't always get what you want, but you can give what others need. And for Illyria, we see that this power that she kind of defined herself by, it has a greater purpose. It's not all about her. It's it's very um, it's it's very much a part of her, but it's something separate from her completely. Um, and she's a character who really understands power and the limits and the responsibility of that power. And we also have Willow. She realizes that the seed is like her responsibility. Like she brought it into the world. But at the same time, like her real responsibility is where it's always been: helping Buffy, and not just Buffy at this point. Um, helping Dawn because again, Willow has been a mother figure for Dawn. Since, I mean, you could say season six, but really from season five, like from the moment we meet her, um, Willow shows a real kind of protectiveness of Dawn. And for Illyria to be the one to say, no, you need to go and save the Slayer's sister, it, it takes Willow back and she's like, oh yeah, my responsibilities and my, my place and my purpose in this in this world. And we've got Simone. She realizes that she's only here to be the monkey wrench in this whole situation. And she's really embraced that, and she chose to be that monkey wrench full on. Like, being the Slayer wasn't giving her what she wanted. She wanted to play with guns, and she wanted to, like, take over the world. And sure, you can do that, but at the end of the day, she was defined by being a Slayer. And the Slayer title is all wrapped up in Buffy. And what is the opposite of Buffy? It's being a vampire. And I like that she talks about her lack of choice in her circumstances of, of being, you know, a kind of Buffy copy. And she decides to really choose something for herself. And through um, looking at Simone and how opposite she is from Buffy, Buffy is able to realize, like, this is not, like, you're not my problem anymore. You are my problem in the basest way, in that now you're the thing that I'm supposed to kill. And before, Buffy would not have killed Simone. Sure, back in season three, she was all ready to, like, kill Faith, but I don't feel like Buffy season nine would actually go through with killing a human Simone Slayer. But due to the fact that Simone throws away every wonderful thing that could have been about being the Slayer, she says, you know what, fuck it. I'm, I'm done with you. I'm not going to try and play nice with you anymore. You made this decision, and this is my job. Like, this is my purpose in this world, to take you out. And I love it because it goes back to um, what Buffy was talking about in A Part of Me. When Buffy is, like, talking to herself, um, Buffy in the robot body talking to blank Buffy in the real Buffy body, I know. <laughs> but um, she says, you're not like her. Like, look at yourself. You're not like her. And that's the truth. And here, Simone shows her true color. She says, you know what? I'm not like Buffy, and I don't want to be. And it allows for this great clarity over the whole situation. Like, this is not what we want. Like, you had your goals, I have mine. They don't mesh. And I, I just love it for Buffy that she gets to have this very clear-cut situation. Not because of anything that happened to Simone, but because of these decisions that Simone really made. And it, again, helps you to see that they are not alike. They don't see the world the same way. And Buffy takes her responsibilities very seriously. And Simone doesn't have that weight of the world on her shoulders. She she doesn't want that weight of the world. She just wants power. And, and that's the difference. Like, Buffy has never been somebody concerned with power. Um, she's very much kind of always trying to get rid of it, and Simone's just trying to get more and more and more, and and that's not the point. Like, the point isn't to be powerful. It's to use the power that you have for something good, like, for others, and, and Simone's just way beyond that. She's totally, like, not even there with us anymore, and so, yeah, the cover, hate it, but the content, love it. I really enjoy what's going on in this issue, and I like all of the implications that it has. Like, all season long, we've been dealing with this magicless world, and now we're, like, surrounded by all of this magic, and it's all crazy, and where do we go from here? Well, stay tuned for issue number 25. It's the finale of season 9. But that's pretty much all I've got for you guys today. Let me know what you thought of this issue in the comment section down below. 
Hi, I'm Preston L. Young. I hope you're having a great 2016 so far, everybody. You can come right back here to the Buffington Post anytime for Buff the Vampire Slayer reviews, Angel and Faith reviews, Buffyverse discussions, discussions on the other Slayers. Go check out my The Leftovers uh, reviews. Uh, the Leftovers will be back, I think, in, like around October. Oh, I'm so excited for it. Uh, I've got a whole playlist of The Leftovers reviews. If you haven't watched The Leftovers, go back, check out Season 1. It's, it's amazing. Get caught up on Season 2. Come back, watch my reviews. Uh, I've got Game of Thrones reviews as well. They're in the uh, playlist of Ice and Fire. But uh, yeah, please, please, like, comment, share, subscribe, and as always, question. Have yourself a great day today, and we'll see you next time. Seven three zero.